you just do a quick 10 count for me? You could do a quick 10 count so I can make sure. I was in La La Land. Uh, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. All right, I think we sound good, look good. Give me one second. Kyle is all you, I'm good. All right, we'll open it up for questions for Coach Trailer. Uh, JJ, you've had your hand raised for about 10 minutes, so you're first. Thanks, thanks, Kyle. Hey, Coach, how's it going? How was, uh, how was your first day in pads today? We started out a little slow, uh, but once, once we got going, we were fantastic. Uh, finished up with a really good, you know, scrimmage and uh, got in about 45 really good plays and got some great scale work, some low red, some high red. So uh, starting to uh, get a little bit better. Uh, I just told them it's never as good as you think and it's never as bad either. It's usually somewhere in between. So but our effort was great once we got going and uh, we're very pleased. I was thinking about it the other day. A lot of these guys haven't been in pads since – like the last week of November, and you mentioned a, l a little bit of rust. How, how, how do you try and work through that, that sort of stuff? Uh, well, you know, that's why I've got great coordinators, and we, we got to motivate, get those kids to go a little bit. It's a little hotter out there, and we got, we got started a little bit later than we normally do. So there's a lot of factors involved, but uh, they got going. You know, that's what's great about uh, getting to coach young men, you know, the old uh, – you can do it right and do it light, or you can do it wrong and do it long. You know, you guys have heard it forever. And, uh, they want to get off that field, go to lunch, and get in the cool. So uh, that's how you motivate them. That little carrot is dangled out in front a little bit and, and get them to roll. You, you've had a handful of practices through this point. How would you characterize the overall health of your team? Are there any significant injuries you could tell us about? Um. No, that's a great question. I, I really don't think about it. There's no, nothing significant. Uh, we had, you know, some, you know, from Jamal Sam in the spring that's still been a carryover. Uh, just some nagging day-to-day -day things. Uh, but we, we've been pretty blessed. Uh, no, no surgeries or anything like that uh, that I'm aware of. All right, Coach, thanks. Hey, Hector, you're up. Coach, good morning. Good morning, Hector. Hey, FYI, Coach, I think the sound of your voice is setting my dogs off because ever since you started, they they have not left me alone, Coach. So apologies if you hear some barking or some going on here in, in the midst of this. You know what they say about uh, children and dog, Hector? They can really uh, they can <laughs> read a man's heart, right? So your dogs, your dogs will go on good dude, Hector. Uh, some apologies to everybody else in the media, too, if they start barking randomly. Um, Coach, the last time we talked, um, there was all this uncertainty. And not that things are set in stone now, but since then, reports, I including reports about the Conference USA, is that several conferences, including Conference USA, are looking very much to move forward. Does that provide a little bit of a peace of mind in terms of your preparation and the work you guys are doing? You know, I'd like to tell you it does, Hector, but this thing has just been so fluid since the very first day. Uh, for for y'all and for us, and you can imagine for our players, it's it's literally been a roller coaster ride. We we've done our best to stay out of that as much as we can. Obviously, we address. You know, I used to be a, a teacher, school teacher back in the day. And I still consider myself a teacher. We still start off practice pretty much with current events, talk about the big things, and you know our E plus our R equals O. Our event. What's the event of the day? What's our response going to be? What's the outcome going to be? We can control you know our response. We can't control the event. I know it sounds like coach talk, uh, but to answer your question more, not coach talk, Hector, uh, it sure was nice to be out there today and uh, hear some positive buzz, which we don't get a lot of. Uh, mostly social media is a, a beat down and uh, the negative love to be negative. You know, and along those lines, coach, and along the lines of the question that JJ asked in terms of being out there with pads for the first time today, I know we're all consumed with, and when I say we, not only the media, but fans as well. Is there going to be a season? Is there going to be a season, right? That's the umbrella under which we're living. I imagine for you guys, once you get, once you, you line up for practice and the whistle blows, I mean, all that, I'm, I'm assuming, kind of goes away. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Um, what's crazy about that, Hector, it's, it's, it's been that way for a coach and a player our entire lives. Our entire lives. When we get inside the lines and we can actually put our headsets on, uh, it's the most three and a half hours of peace and tranquility because you, it's an escape. And uh, that's what people miss so much about the game of football for players, for coaches, for trainers, 
uh, it's really our passion. And it's what we are called to do. And uh, it, you're exactly right. When we get out on the field, uh, it's as if the rest of the world is just blocked out and we're literally with the guys that we work with and plan with and train with all the time for a, for a cause greater than just our own selfishness. It's a, it's a wonderful sport when it's played the right way, coached the right way, played the right way, and you truly love your teammates. It's the best sport in the world. Thank you, Coach. Hey, Greg, you're up. Jeff, uh, along the lines of the COVID protocols, uh, the Big 12 this morning announced that they're going to be doing three tests per week. And, you know, as these things evolve and as teams add new protocols and conferences put out new guidelines, do you ever worry that UTSAs and like schools at this level in Carbons USA might not be able to keep up with everything that the big boys are doing just from like a resource perspective in terms of what's available at the Power 5 level? Um, well, I mean, I, you know, I... I don't, I'd rather not answer that question. I've got my own. I'll talk to you in private about all that. But, you know, we'll, we'll be fine. Cool. Got it. All right, JJ, you're up. Co Coach, so as, as things kind of develop and progress, how do you – kind of just block out the noise of, you know, continuing the fall camp grind without, you know, trying to pay too much attention to, you know, there's meetings today, what what's going to be announced tomorrow. Do you just, are you, you just put your head down and keep going? We have to, we have to, we, we, we understand that the, the media has a job and TV has a job and radio has a job. Everybody has a job and we understand that. We really do. Uh, but we, we can't get in that world too much. Uh, we, we've got a lot of people, we, we've got Kyle, uh, we've got our, our department that takes care of that for us. And they let us know what we have to know. Uh, if you don't block out the noise, you, you can't play this game. Uh, there's no way you can be a quarterback, a kicker, a punter. You can't play the game. You can't coach the game if you listen to the noise. Because uh, you're being reactive. You're not being proactive. You, you got to be a person that has some moral convictions and, and know who you are and live who you are every day. You can't be reactive to what everybody in the world is telling you, how you should live, what you should do. Uh, it's dangerous to, uh, to wake up and be that way. Uh, obviously, we got to read and we got to listen to stuff, uh, but we just can't get up in all the chatter or, or we won't be able to produce and we get distracted. We can't focus and it's not good. So you're exactly right. We, we ignore it. Uh, we cannot keep our heads in the dirt. I don't want y'all to think we're that, uh, you know, simple of creatures, uh, but we, we have people that are, that's what their jobs are to do. And I trust Kyle's going to let me know what I need to know. Dr. Compost is going to let me know what I need to know. My DFO is going to let me know what I need to know. But we don't, we don't spend a lot of time uh, keeping up with all that stuff. We're, we're keeping up with our recruits, and our players, and uh, our coaches, and their parents. That's, that's about where we stay in our own bubble. Thanks, Coach. All right. Anything else for Coach Trailer? All right. Thank you. We'll get Coach Lepp in there shortly. Thank you all. Thanks, Jeff. Give Coach Levin, then. All right. One second. Oh, go ahead. Keep you nice and uh, leveled out. Good. Give me a quick tag count. So I mean, check your audio. Check my audio. How about that? Good. 
Okay. One more time. Let's make sure. All right. Audio check. Audio check. Everybody blow the whistle. I just came off that practice. No, no, <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're good. I got you. Uh, looks good. Sounds good. I'm going to go away. Kyle's all you. All right. We'll take questions for Coach Lepp. Uh, JJ, you're up. Coach, thanks for joining us. How was, uh, what was it like today seeing your guys in full, full pads? Uh, JJ, I'm going to lie to you, man. It was exciting. Um, heck, it feels like we've been here for over a year almost. I know we haven't, but it feels like it's been so long since we've uh, seen him, period, and then to see him for the first time in pads, it was just exciting to see him run around, fly around. Uh, I thought we had great effort. Uh, it started a little bit slow early. Uh, Coach Nick's kind of got that changed. Uh, we kind of got after him a little bit, uh, you know, pounding those pads a little bit about period two. Then I think after that, those kids caught on, and they said, hey, man, it's a different day today. Let's get after it. So it's fun. Without having a spring, you know, the, the, the uncertainties of the summer, then finally getting walkthroughs and, and now fall camp. Uh, how has that challenge been for, for you, the coaching staff? Uh, you know, JJ, it's been, I think it's been a challenge for everybody in the country. Uh, you know, there's no excuses. I think Coach Trailer has done a great job of making sure we keep our eyes on the prize, keep focused every day, win the day. You know, that's been his thing. Pound the fist, win the day. And so that's all we've tried to do, whether it's been a Zoom meeting, whether it's been a walkthrough, we've just given our best to these kids. Our, these kids, now let me tell you something, they've given all their best to us. Uh, I do have to give credit to them. They have been unbelievable. I'm not missing Zoom meetings, um, making sure they've been very intent and listening uh, and the walkthroughs and everything. So it's, it's been a really good deal. Uh, no excuses here, man. It's, it's up to us each day to, to get the most out of them I think we have. All right, thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you, JJ. Hey, Greg, you're up. Coach, what has it been like recruiting during this time period? How has that process changed from what you're used to? Um, it's been very different, Greg. I tell you, um, a lot more. Now, the thing that's been nice, the NCAA has changed a little bit with the rules on phone calls. We've been able to actually call kids more. Uh, so that's been nice. Uh, so we've been able to try to reach out and call them instead of text and say, hey, call me. Uh, so that's been good. But, it, you know, it, it was tough not going out in the spring and seeing kids. You know, we had a lot of kids that we evaled on film uh, that their eval said, hey, we want to see in spring. We want to see him in practice. We want to see him run around. And then we weren't able to do that. So we kind of had to dig a little deeper, uh, watch a little bit more game film on them, and then uh, try to do our evaluations that way. So the good thing is I think our staff has done a really good job with communication. We've had Zoom meetings on recruiting. You know, we'd watch a kid. We're sitting there all on a Zoom call trying to communicate. And it's kind of funny sometimes. You had three coaches trying to say one thing, and then we'd all not say something. Then we'd all three try to say something, not say something. So – it's been entertaining in a way, uh, but it's been a little bit different for sure. Is there anything you're going to take from this period and how things have operated here that you can use back when things are back to normal? No doubt. I think we can actually take advantage of the Zoom calls. You know, I think we want kids to come to campus. That's not going to change. When the NCAA opens things up and allows us to have kids on campus, listen, that's our goal. We want kids to come here. We want them to see – uh, what UTSA has to offer this campus, our new facilities. We want them to be able to see that. But when kids can't, whether it's because their family is working, um, whether it's because they're too far away, they can't afford it, whatever it is, now we can take advantage of using the Zoom. We can walk around campus. We can walk around uh, our new facility that's going to be done here soon and show them pictures, show them the video, and talk to them as we do that. So we're definitely going to take advantage of the Zoom stuff Looking at the safeties group that you have here, what has Rashad Wisdom brought to your guys' team? How do you summarize what he brings to the camp? Rashad is, uh, you know, I don't want to say he's an ultimate pro because he's not a pro, uh, but he is an ultimate pro in a way. Uh, he brings his uh, hard hat to work every day. Sucker's out there. He's working. He's talking. He's an unbelievable teammate, great leader, encouraging guys. The best thing about, you know, his leadership, he's able to do it and show it as an example as well. He's just not all talk. He's an unbelievable uh, confidence in it because of last year and, and everything he was able to do as a freshman all-conference player. So the confidence he has in himself, you can see it in him, uh, and the players feed off of that for sure. How valuable from an X's and O's perspective is his versatility? You know, it seems like he can play kind of a hybrid linebacker position or get back in coverage. He can play a lot of things. It's, you know, uh, 
uh, his last name says it, wisdom. That sucker has some wisdom now. Uh, he can he can think. Uh, he plays extremely fast, and his knowledge for the game is unbelievable. And we do. We move him around and have some fun with him. Uh, that sucker can play on the edge. He can play deep. He can play in the middle. Uh, you just put him wherever. And the good thing about it, he can handle it. He is a very, very intelligent, smart football player. And uh, those guys at times are hard to find. You know, he, um, he gets it. You tell him one time and he knows it, he's ready to go out there. So I'm excited. I'm excited for the season he's going to have. Very excited to be coaching him. Um, and, and we'll kind of go from there. He was telling us that sort of the coverages you guys are playing are a little bit of an adjustment compared to what they were used to last year. How have you seen the guys as a whole handle that transition? Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest thing is when you have a coaching change, just the terminology. Uh, that's the hardest thing is just trying to understand that there's terminology that's going to be different because we're going to do some same things, but we might call it different. And then we might teach it a little bit different way. Instead of uh, inside leverage, we might play outside leverage. Instead of coming down in between guys, we might come down on somebody and reroute them. Um, so there's some things that are the same. It's just getting used to the terminology and then the different techniques and fundamentals uh, that we're, we're applying uh, with those coverages. But have the players taken to it pretty well? Has it been smooth? They've been taken to it wonderful. Um, I couldn't be more proud. And uh, I tell you, especially for my group, uh, I can only speak for my group. Uh, they are busting their tail. Uh, you know, I do a lot of what I call voiceovers for them. I try to voice over about 10 to 12 plays and uh, talk through them each walkthrough or each practice we have. And then they'll sit there and they watch and they can go home and watch them. So after our meeting, even though I can't go home with them, uh, they can take me home on their uh, iPhone or iPad, and, and they can listen to me talk through a play. So they've done a wonderful job. Again, I can't say enough about our players with how badly they want to be good, you know, how hard they are working uh, to be the best they can be. I, I give them an awful lot of credit. How about from a COVID perspective and all the safety precautions that need to be in place, how has this fall camp been different from your perspective? Uh, you know, heck, Greg, I ain't got to lie to you, man. I'm just an assistant coach. I just do what I told. I know this. Uh, our training staff, our administration, our head coach, who I think is the best head coach in the country, they are on top of it. They are continually to, to telling the kids this is about safety first. They're always making sure that we're trying to stay, you know, six feet, social distancing. That's why our meeting rooms were all spread out. That's, I'm not gonna, that's been different. You know, I got to talk a little louder. Uh, now, because my guys are more spread out instead of kind of bunched together. Uh, but we've, I think our, our administration, again, our training staff, our head coach, they've handled it very, very well. And uh, we're making sure we stay on top of all the, the latest things when it comes out. Got it. Thanks. Thank you, Greg. All right. Do we have anything else for Coach Lepp? <clears throat> all right. Appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll get the players in there shortly. <clears throat>
and your shot and get an audio test, and you'll see the people pop up here that are asking questions. And I'll be I'll be calling them on my laptop. You'll do what? Right. Give me one second. I'm going to get to frame you up. Oh, okay. So, so you'll be able to hear me call them and they'll show up on the screen to ask the question. All right. Just make sure there is a uh, kind of a black line on the ground. Just make sure your your feet right behind it. I'm gonna go ahead and line you up real quick for your video. All right, go ahead and give me a quick uh, ten count. Just check the audio. What'd you say? Uh, give me a quick ten count. Let's count to ten to check the audio. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Okay. We're seven. good there. Good. We're good. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and pause myself. Uh, call all you. I can't hear you. Anyway. <laughs> I was talking to Cal. Sorry. I am. I'm ready to rock and roll. It's all up to. Uh... All right. Uh, we'll open it up for questions for Savion Harris. Uh, JJ, you're up first. Hey, Savion, how's it going? What was it like uh, getting into practice today with full pads? What was that like? Uh, man, everything good. Uh, the energy and vibe is amazing uh, with these new coaches and stuff. And being back in the pads, being that we didn't have a spring, uh, it was great. You know what I'm saying? We got to hit a little bit and just stud. So it felt good to be back out there with all the pads. Well, what's the overall mood like with the players on the team, considering everything that's kind of surrounding college football in general? Honestly, uh, the, the mood with the whole team was really optimistic, I could say. Everybody really want to play. Everybody excited for the season, uh, excited for, you know, everything going on and how much work we put in. We definitely want to uh, have this work, hard work pay off. So, I mean, the mood is great. Everyone's optimistic and just ready to play. Yeah, all you guys are on social media, so I'm sure you see kind of what's been reported with other conferences and stuff. Do you guys – like pay attention to that or you just kind of try and block it out? Well, um, as far as social media, I know there's a lot of guys on the team who don't even go on social media like that trying to take a stand. So um, really, we, we just trying to have our voices heard and uh, let everybody know that we, we, we trying to play. So. Thanks, Avi. I appreciate it, man. No problem. Hey, Greg, you're up. Davion, along those lines, how do you guys – try to stay focused with all that's going on. Is that a challenge to bring it every day in practice through all of that? Uh, I, I don't think it really is a challenge. I mean, we together really all day. Uh, so, I mean, we just work hard and, and we stay locked in, uh, just trying to get better and learn every all the new stuff going on. So, I mean, it's not too hard uh, focusing up. You know, Coach has a real good, real good program he got for us with, with just the whole schedule and everything. So, I mean, we're, we're really excited. We're real focused. So, ready to go. How has practice been different this fall with all the different precautions in place? How does it compare to a normal year? Uh, really, the only thing I will say is really different. Um, just the whole the whole mask thing and checking the temperature every morning. Uh, that's that's kind of weird, and we kind of got to stay away from each other from for the social distancing. But I mean, other than that, other than that, we bring it. Uh, football is going to be football at the end of the day. We just working hard for for everybody. So. All right, Evan, you're up. Hello. Let me take myself off mute. Um, building off of that, just how do you guys in the locker room feel? Like, do you feel this responsibility that if you have a season, the ball is really in your court? And what are you guys doing to sort of have that leadership to say, hey, we need to follow the protocols the right way. We got to avoid dangerous situations and, and stuff like that. Can you ask that one more time? I'm just I'm sort of saying, like, as players, do you feel more responsibility in how this season is going to happen? It seems like the players and their ability to avoid getting the virus is going to be the, the big factor of whether this season happens. So do you as players get together in meetings saying, hey, we need to hold ourselves responsible? Well, I mean, I, we don't really have too much talk about that. We, we kind of just try to stay in our own little bubble. And uh, keep it at that. Uh, that's really the big, or really the only precautionary we really try to take is trying to just stay in our little bubble and just work every day. Uh, we haven't really met uh, any any types of sorts uh, as players to uh, kind of keep safe from that. But I mean, in the locker room, we talk about it a little bit just to 
you know what I'm saying? We, we kind of what if, but I mean, for the most part, we 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 really good. And I know if we stay here, uh, it's a lot safer than going home and just being exposed to a lot of the people. So I know definitely uh, being in our little bubble helps. So. So it it's a, just a common understanding with you guys that hey, you know during the season we're gonna do things the right way and and that's just the expectation. Yeah, um, I would say really we haven't even we we kind of just trying to make it to the season, but we we kinda, we trying we trying to just stay where our feet are. But I mean we we trying to just stay away from a lot of outsiders and just just uh like I said stay in the bubble. But, Thank you. All right, Greg, you're up. Savion, do you personally feel completely safe going through with the season, or where do you stand on the risks that are in play? Uh, I feel safe. Uh, definitely. Uh, really just, I don't know. I just, my take on it is being with the guys every day, not letting the outsiders in, is really the safest way to go because being home, you don't know what people are going to do. You don't know what people have to do. Here we all have a schedule. We have an itinerary of what we got going on. We just stand together. We're not around too many people as as uh, opposed to going home and being exposed to a whole bunch of different people, uh, friends, and you don't know what they're doing. Everyone here, you know, everyone has is here all day, and we're not really up. So um, I feel completely safe uh, with the guys around me. Uh, we just all, we, we for the most part, of us feel the same way. At any point during camp or, or leading up till now, did you guys have a discussion as a team about the option to opt out of the season that a lot of people have taken? Was that a conversation that you guys had within your group? Um, no, nah, we no one really no one really talked about opting out at all. We all just honestly, we just excited to play for our new coach, our new coaches. And uh yeah, with, and I don't think it ever ever crossed anyone's mind really to opt out. Because, I mean, everyone's just really excited with the with the energy and the vibes going on here. So, I mean, we all just – we all ready to go. Is it a tough situation just for college football players in general to not really have a say in whether the season goes forward? It feels like these decisions are being made by, you know, school presidents and athletic directors, and you guys just kind of have to deal with the consequences. What is that like from from your perspective? Uh, my perspective, I think it, I think it is a little, it's a little hard to, hard to bear, like, cause, I mean, a lot of us do want to play, and it's hard because I feel like they're not listening to us. I feel like the, the uppers are, are kind of just trying to make a decision and on uh, what they think is right when, you know, the players are trying to speak out and have their voice, and they, they at the end of the day are gonna have the decision, and I think we should be heard a lot more. Do you feel like your voice is at least heard within the UTSA program that Coach Trailer and the other coaches care what you guys have to say and will act on that? Absolutely, absolutely. I think Coach Trailer and 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 really uh, UTSA, uh, Dr. Campos, uh, uh, Dr. Amy. I think every, they're really listening to us. Uh, they're trying to keep things going because they know we want to keep things going, and uh, they're definitely they want the better for us, and and, and they're definitely asking for our opinion and and trying to go off and base it off that. So. I mean, they definitely, uh, they take our input a lot and uh, we're trying to roll with that. So it, it's really a hard one, you know what I'm saying? Know that, know that they got that going on. Thanks, Savion. Anything else for Savion? All right, we'll get Kalechi in there shortly. Uh, just make sure your feet is right behind it. 
then frame you up real quick. Go ahead and kind of give me a, a quick 10 count, just kind of check your audio. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. One last second and I'm set. Crank you up a little bit. Okay. All right. I am good. I'm meeting myself. Kyle, how are you? All right. Uh, we'll take questions for Kalechi. Uh, JJ, you are up first. Hey, Kalechi, how's it going? What was it like to get out there in full pad today, get some contact going? Oh, everybody was excited. Everybody brought the juice. I mean, from the time we stepped on the turf, everybody's flying around. Smiles on everyone's face because, I mean, it's been a while since we really got to hit anybody with, you know, no spring ball. So was, everybody was very excited. Was there any rust out there today? Coach said he kind of the, – the coordinators kind of had to get on you guys a little bit. <laughs> oh, well, of course it's going to be rust. I mean, everybody's learning a new system. And, you know, everybody just every day trying to get more and more comfortable with it. And, I mean, with that, they want perfect effort. So as long as everybody's flying to the ball, I mean – we're gonna be good. What what's the overall mood of the of the players on the team with everything kind of generally surrounding college football right now? What what's kind of the feel in the locker room? I mean, we're eager and we're very grateful too because not a lot of people got to wake up today and play football. And I mean, every day we walk out there, we know it's a blessing and we can't take it for granted. So I mean, that makes everybody work even harder. Thanks, Kalechi. JJ, I'm not sure if you froze there, or was that your last question? That's it. Thanks. Okay. All right, uh, Greg, you're up. Hey, Kalechi, to to what extent are you following all the news that's going on around college football? How much are you, you know, checking Twitter, or, or what's that like for you? I mean, in the social media age, of course we're going to see it all. But I mean, Coach Trailer's really, you know, instilled in us that you know just focus on us. And right now, we're on go and. I mean, our schedule is still in place, and whoever decides to play as we want, we're going to have to be ready. As you see all that information and all the changes, do you personally feel totally safe with going through with the season, or where do you stand on that? I mean, as far as UTSA, I mean, they've taken every single protocol. I mean, the way they set up camp and our meetings, weight room, everything, I feel extremely safe here. So... I mean, as long as every other school is is doing what we're doing, I know we'll be just fine. What's been like the biggest change or the hardest thing to adjust to with all of those differences that are going on right now? Probably, probably lifting with a mask on. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that, that one's pretty tough. But in all seriousness, I mean, just everybody being split up in meetings. I mean, everybody's six feet away from each other, um, even in the cafeteria we go to eat everybody's spaced out so I mean it's going to take some getting used to but it's definitely something that everybody can cope with. How much have you had to change your routine even away from team activities just to to make sure that you were staying safe in, in those environments as well? Well that's the challenge for I mean college athletes we have to be professional and we got to know like when you go home you can't just be going everywhere and going to parties and everything like that. So, I mean, me personally, what I would do is I go to my room. I mean, I get more time to study. I'm not really focused on the outside world as much. And I mean, during camp, you don't have as much time anyway. So it's good. As a player, do you feel like you or, you know, you as your, you and your teammates as well, like have a voice in how this gets handled and that your opinion matters in terms of protocols that are in place or even whether the season continues to go forward? I, I think definitely we do. I mean, you see on social media the hashtag, we want to play. I mean, Coach Trailer is definitely listening to us. He knows how bad we want to play. And I mean, he's doing everything in his power to, to really save our season and, and push for us. Thanks, Kalechi. Anything else for Kalechi? All right. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.